the kind of education abroad that she was getting herself. So uh, she actually educated herself by paying for it herself, by writing articles. And in one of the chapters, she has got bandages on her fingers because her fingers were sore and she was still typing on so that she could earn money to pay for her education. So I think seeing all that has been, I think it makes you a deeper and a richer person to have an experience first time of such an amazing life. So a different inspiring life, her tragedy, her professional triumph, and the ability to hold it all together despite the odds is stuck of movies. And uh, as a professor of uh, film, I, I found the book extremely visual. There were a lot of colors, very descriptive visual things. So if this book were to be transferred on screen, how would you envisage it? Well, uh, a lot of people, the, basically my writing style is very visual. I, I like to take people through, and through a place, through a scene. I like my readers to, if I can make my readers just cry a little or laugh or feel something, I have achieved what I set out to do. Uh, one of my favorite lines in the book is, let me take you through this place uh, where history was made while the paint st still smelled fresh. This is about when there were no movies, people used to read and get an idea. I was a great fan of John Keats, whose whole thing is that the, it's not only the mind, but the senses must be stimulated when you're reading a book. So, uh, yes, it is very visual. I have already got an offer uh, from the producers of Agripa, and uh, that they want to make a 12 part serial for a television channel, but I'm hoping that the first, uh, I've, I've declined that for the moment because I think before a series for the television is made, her life should go on to the screen as a feature film. And my dream person for that would be Karina Kapoor. I think she has that in her, just that personality. Um, throughout the book, we found uh, various uh, descriptions. For example, we found a certain amount of business acumen. We found a certain uh, we found a body romance. Um, we found a lot of growing up, a lot of life and its uh, trials and tribulations. Um, but despite uh, each of the genres being covered, the book in itself has a very wide mass appeal. Was it a deliberate thing or um, was it just by chance that this happened? I think it happened by chance because the book actually covers her entire life. So, I, like I said, that uh, it's a personal life that goes into work. So, as I said, it's an ideal Valentine's Day gift because the first half I told somebody for women, the second half was for men, where it goes into a business. There is a very uh, small age gap between you and the patient. So, uh, and you have seen your mother probably grow as a celebrity in front of your life. But does that make you idolize her even more? Or is she still ma? I mean, is she still a mother or is she a celebrity? You know, it's very hard for a child to ever view uh, their mother as anything else than a mother. But uh, she is uh, she's a very busy person. She's always made time for the family. But I can never view her as a celebrity, because she's my mother after all. Um, is there a border somewhere that uh, you draw between your personal life and your professional life? Uh, is she the same at work and at home? And is, are your dynamics the same wherever you want to go? Or do you have to change with the outside world? And you know, um, my mother has, does not have a borderline. She is almost the same everywhere because she is working all the time. I think when she's going to sleep at night also, she's making one phone call to a factory to say so. You look completely. Um, would you like to elaborate on this single line? Well, I think that um, it, it, the world is not necessarily a man's world, like they say. 
it's not a woman's world, it's just our world. So, you know, uh, this whole, um, the, basically the Indian woman today, I feel, is going through a lot of confusion in her own mind about emancipation. So, it's not necessary to fight a man the way, uh, you know, to compete with men in the way men are. I think women have so much more to celebrate. After all, if God chose a woman to have a child, it is because he abused her somehow more sensitive and, um, you know, I don't know the word for it. I don't know her as a sensitive woman like that. But in some way, I think he chose her as um, somebody a little more superior in some ways, emotionally, to, do, uh, to their children. So I think a woman must celebrate everything that she gets in her life with a lot of to a woman. She must be a lovely woman and succeed in the world as a woman, as a great woman. The best way to compete in the world is to bring out the best of what you're born with. Um, when you were writing the book, did you also keep women's empowerment in mind? Yes, as I mentioned, the women's empowerment was my most important issue. I think a lot of we are, we are realizing now that a, a lot of women are unsafe in their own homes. They are not able to actually say goodbye to their lives because they are so dependent on their families. And I think if women are empowered to earn, it uh, increases respect for them, it increases safety, it increases their, their self-worth. And I think empowerment is, I work a lot with, uh, I have a lot, several NGOs where I train young girls and I think empowerment is the most important thing. You may use it or you may decide. I think taking a choice to be a housewife is as important a choice to a woman can choose whatever she wants. She just must know that she has the ability to stand on her own feet if she needs to. Um, while we're all fighting for independence and our rights, um, do you still feel that women need a support system as well or are we better off? You know, I think this gender difference, uh, difference between men and women sometimes uh, gets, um, you know, like a faulty. I think we all need support systems. You see men alone and sometimes they look so lonely and lost. Everybody needs a support system. My mother could not have ever achieved what she did without my father. He helped her every step, like I've written in the book, she, he was the wind beneath her wings. He was literally the force that made her what she became. So I think, uh, and as life becomes more modernized and more challenging and the pressures out there in the world are tougher, the support systems at home have to become stronger to give you that balance when you return. So that is why I think support systems are more important today than they ever were. Because without that balancing factor, taking the world outside is not going to be that easy for young people. Um, you, could you tell us how Sanasa Singh decided to take up beauty as a profession and why specifically um, Ayurveda? I mean, um, why not cosmetics? I think because she was a very offbeat person, she always wanted to do what nobody else had ever done. Um, she uh, was very restless after two years of her marriage and she had never planned to ever work in her life. She tried interior decoration, she tried painting, she tried a whole other thing. And then that destiny meeting you, a gentleman called Abdel Nafri, who is a very friendly, well-known journalist, met her and he said, um, Shanaz, if you're so bored, take this address and go to this lady. She runs a beauty school and he just gave her the address and walked away. And her life was never the same. And um, yes, Ayurveda, she had the courage at the time that Ayurveda was not considered, you know, interesting to anybody at all. She took on Ayurveda, took it from grandma's chest, Covered and put it on the shelves of places like Celtic in London and Gallery of Ayat and Paris. So, to her daughter's credit, a pioneering 
you know, a complete uh, domino effect in the Indian cosmetic industry. The effect that she has had on others who have come in, on others who have been encouraged is tremendous. Of course, she has given so many women a career, which is a great thing. Um, throughout the book, I get as a family that is very traditional, very cultural, um, very rich in intelligence and very deep with it. They're very aware about who they are, where they come from. Has that shaped the Shana we say in BC today? Definitely. She was brought up in a family where there was a very um, strong influence. Uh, uh, my grandfather was a chief justice. His brother was a chief justice in India. My great-grandfather, for three generations, was commander-in-chief of the Hyderabad Army. So she came from a very, very, uh, a family with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of dignity, a lot of education, a lot of uh, different, you know, aspects. So I went with a career, holding on to her family, and I think that is the most important lesson that comes in today's context, because more and more marriages are breaking up today, because girls want to find themselves, and they've lost themselves. You'll never find yourself if you're somewhere lost within yourself first. So I think she had the capacity to hold on to her marriage as strongly as she held on to her ambitions. So I think there goes a very, very big lesson to learn. It's not always possible, everybody has different circumstances, but I think if it's possible, the marriage as a casualty should be the last thing to consider. I'm traditional grandmother and between a very open marriage.
there were times that she did feel that her career was a greater pressure on herself than anything else. So definitely, I think if you you do take your family along, the woman is still uh, genetically conditioned. The way God made her to feel more concerned. If there's nothing she can do about it, about her family. So I think that a man can leave and come back and not be as concerned. That you can't do anything about the way a woman's mind is hardwired. And I think she remained always very concerned when she was traveling. So um, I think that's the definition of it. So I, Melissa Curry Boy, dedicate this book of my mother's life to the memory of my father and set it free to the world. Thanks now for living out the story of my book. If in life we are to be judged by what we make of ourselves, we must also acknowledge that there is another side to us where we live our lives with the genes we inherit. My grandfather, Nasser Allah Beg, was the son of the Chief Justice of Hyderabad, and my grandmother, Saida Begum, was the daughter of the Commander-in-Chief of the Hyderabad Army, the third successive generation to hold that position. The wedding of my grandparents was a result of an alliance between the two leading families of Hyderabad, arranged personally by the Nizam. I remember it as though it was yesterday, an image etched clearly in my mind. My mother standing in front of the dresser, adjusting the large three-piece mirror to see the back of her head. The oval mirror with scalloped edges was handed down from her mother. I can even remember my grandmother's face looking into it when I was very young. This is the story of my mother who was born a flame, a flame so bright that not all of life's storms could douse a single spark of her intensely free spirit. Every time a wind splashed on her, she rose again with an irrepressible energy. Because of the 